Hello and welcome back in to the Long Shot Podcast. We have a very special episode uh, here today. We are live. Well, actually, well, we're live, but we're recording right. uh, in the Friday Beers studio HQ. Head, HQ Friday sorry. Beers HQ. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, we are joined by the three founders, three brothers, uh, grew up in the same household now, just killing the media game. Uh, we got Max here. What's up? We got Sam. <laughs> hey. And we got Jack. Uh, thank you guys so Nothing much for joining Jack. us. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> and uh, and for hosting us. This is a uh, beautiful facility that you guys have thank here. You. Well, we have an open door policy um, because our door doesn't lock, actually. Right. So, so it applies to homeless people, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you I, must get just a, a fun mix in Anyone here. can walk I in. I recently yeah. kicked one out from inside the gates. Yeah. Uh, He's masturbating and outside yeah. at first. Oh dear. Yeah. oh dear. Well, this feels like a good opportunity to let yeah. you guys know this is an explicit podcast. Great. Yeah. So uh, tap into that. Feel free to beating his meat outside. Okay. <laughs> okay. Not the completion yeah. though. Yeah. Um, if you guys could just do our listeners a favor, uh, believe it or not, I, I imagine there might be some people out there who don't know exactly what you guys do what Friday beers is. Uh, if you want to give somewhat of a summary, however you do it in, in your own words, uh, feel free to, you know, fire that off real quick. Actually. Sorry. So we, Duncan usually gives an intro yeah, to yeah. our guests. Yeah. I, it might be in, an insult. No, it's not. It's, it's a weird thing to try to describe. Okay. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't know what lane no, to go in. We also, I still struggle with like coming up with a very concise, clear way of right. explaining Friday beers. Make Jack does dick jokes on the internet yeah. for a living. I like that. It's, it's, that's it's, simplified. It's yeah. high level. I mean, I feel like if you wanted to, you could dress it up and yeah, say we, you're, you know, so media, what, what up and coming I, media conglomerate. <laughs> what we say, dick jokes on the internet is what we say to our friends, but what we'd have to say to like our parents is it's a social media platform, production company, and we're a lifestyle brand too. Wow. You're rocking the merch right now. Too. I am. You better believe it. But yeah. Full yeah. support. At, at the core of it is, uh, you know, we make sketch comedy videos on Instagram, um, and it's, it's been, you know, the brand of humor is like 2021 party lifestyle humor. Right. It's right. kind of joking about the nine to five grind and, uh, the emotions we feel every day of the week leading up to the, the ultimate cathartic Friday beers release right. that is, is universal and what people really, uh, I think it really resonates with, yeah. with a lot of people and, and we, you know, we build characters, we build storylines, and the best way we've been described is uh, zodiac signs for guys. Mm. So, Ooh, and yeah. making fun of yourself as much as possible. Yeah. Self-deprecation is yeah. a big part of it as well. But zodiac signs for guys, I think, is, is uh, the clearest way to describe it. So instead of you're an Aries, you're a Scorpio, it's like, oh, you're a big fella. Right. You're a fringe guy. Definitely. Fringe. Is that is that what you is that what you see here in vision? For us? <laughs> I, I don't know you well enough. You're just tall. That's so a tough yeah. call on the fringe it's early. For I feel sure. like that's a. I'm gonna lean into <laughs> whatever. Some slander, slander there. Yeah. I'll lean into that. Fringe guy is actually the best character, so you should take no offense. Why do you say that? He's the most beloved character because he has the most heart. He He's wants a, to be part of the crew so bad. I do have heart. That he will go to great lengths to do whatever he can to hang. Yeah. yeah and that that's sense. something you got to respect. Also, you respect a little persistence. Little now that I'm spending more time around this guy, yeah. I certainly am the fringe guy. <laughs> it's like settings. the walkout on a basketball team would be Ooh. pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So you, you have evolved from yeah, fringe Were you a walk-on? <laughs> Oh, not quite a walk on, but I was. Glorified. Glorified. For, for a little while, there was looking a little shaky. But I will say, like, walk ons are an incredibly important part of the team. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the underappreciated. You sound like a fringe well, guy yeah. vouching for other fringe guys. And fringe guys are actually, they need them. Leading well, it's the more movement than, to normalize fringe guys. Right. Well, it's more so like maybe I've lived in that space before. Yeah. So now that. You know, in, in some capacity, I've I've elevated myself, not to like pat myself on the back there, no, but I can. just have That's more fine. empathy for. You understand where, where you, you come from as a friend. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You've seen both sides yeah. pretty well. A hundred percent. Um, you guys mentioned the the relatable content because that's the All thing right. that jumps out to me is like when you're watching your stuff throughout every clip, video, whatever it is, there's always something that like each mm -hmm. person can kind of tap into is all of your content was it formed through your own personal experiences and basically like your lives growing up in Connecticut and then, you know, making your way out here? Yeah, I would, I would say for the most part, that's what drives everything is like the people that we've grown up with and yeah. like hung out with and socialized with and have beers with. And like, we're in an interesting place right now with Friday Beers because for the longest time, we haven't really been like personalities behind the account. Right. Because we all felt that Friday Beers was really more about characters than it was about you know two or three 
guys. Yeah. And like in that archetypes of people. Yeah, in that sense, like the characters are not just like our friends. They're like your friends too. Like yeah. you know these folks. Like everybody who's sort of grown up uh and sort of enjoyed what you do with your friends throughout the week and the weekend knows these characters. So like we like to put those characters in the forefront. And we base them like literally yeah. on what we think are composites, like everybody who's in your group. Well, I think that what we didn't realize is how much our group friend dynamic mirrors uh, so many everyone, everyone else. Yes, yes, yes. It's just like a plug and play template. And now and we have like the world's largest group thread ever, like <laughs> right. Friday beers. Like it's just people like exchange, like talking shit about like who's who in this like millions of person group thread, which is a pretty awesome feeling. Yeah. I was, uh, <laughs> some of the content, some of the characters, I feel like have had their own, you know, character arc as well, and that they've developed. And there, there's some sort of like a a screenplay feel to this. And and there's like a connection that you build with the characters as well over time as they develop. Um, is there like for you guys personally, were each of you based off of or rooted in like a, a character that, that people have come to know or is that just kind of like fire from the hip feel it out yeah, I'm thing? meat hose yeah, <laughs> I, I would say yeah. I'm probably angry yeah. <laughs> we, no we didn't base anything on our, ourselves really I think you also have like a different role in a lot of different groups too like yeah, whoever you're There's hanging a lot of out hybrid with characters yeah. as well you can be a little bit of a glue guy and maybe you're Jimmy Heaters as well <laughs> yeah you can, certainly hybrids yeah, yeah. and when we, when we started making the account we were like really conscious of like creating these characters because we did want to have storylines we didn't want it to be another like meme account where you can sort of make content out of anything and it's just like rinse and repeat all the time you can stay with this you watch for a week or a month or a year we've got people who tune into friday beers you know eight months after it started like i feel like i'm on season four already it's a combination of like yeah. the recurring characters so like it the the, the new videos mean more if you've seen yes six yeah. months of it but at the same time come invest it you could be yeah. watching for the first time and still get it so it's like yeah it's it's a it's a balance of those two and and what max and i were doing um for a while before friday beers is we were trying to be you know comedy writers and we were trying to write screenplays and we we're trying to write comedy pilots and we did sketch comedy for a while and it's hard to get people to like read what you do or watch what you make when you don't have like a resounding success. And we turned to Instagram primarily in the beginning to be like, hey, we think the jokes that we're making are pretty funny. Like what if we just gave it a format where a lot more people could see it more easily and understand it more quickly, one minute or less videos. And then that's when people started thinking the characters are funny. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was going to ask each of you individually about your yeah. stories as to how you got here. Um, and just doing some some research, uh, would like you to know I was well prepared for this interview. <laughs> um, but it, you have some some interesting journeys in that like, I did can't- Did you go on LinkedIn? We did look on LinkedIn. <laughs> we looked on LinkedIn. That's, nice. more, that's where I got the dress it up uh, concept right. from because you, uh, you guys are a little bit more you know, buttoned up on, on there. But uh, I just want you guys to shine some light. You know, you can go down the line however you want to do it on how you guys ultimately ended up where we are today, which Please. is an yeah. undisclosed location yeah. in well, we Friday HQ. Developed pretty uh, bad drinking problems early. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. And I got the worst of it. Yeah. As no, the we, uh, <laughs> Jack and I had a similar, so Jack and I are, are pretty close in age, 18 yeah. months apart. And we had out of college similar kind of career trajectories, we went to work in media. I was in advertising specifically as a copywriter in LA, uh, writing shitty car ads for Acura. And they Petro. weren't that shitty. They were pretty bad. Summer it sales, like, 2018. Like, yeah, like running footage on an open road, like sick. <laughs> and the, the avocado account was pretty good. Yeah, California avocados made some bangers for them. Love and, that, uh, love that. But obviously like it was like tangential to like what we wanted to do in terms of like actual like screenwriting. Um, so during like the four years I was at this agency, Jack and I were working on projects on the side and, and just hoping the side hustle would evolve into something uh, we could turn to a, a career. It's like if your podcast became big enough so you could quit basketball. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's the goal, right? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's not a very exciting background story. It's just like I was out here writing ads, uh, going on benders and making comedy. And then those things it's a kind, of like, only, kind of melted yeah, together. Surprisingly together. perfect combination yeah. where Friday beers began. There's a lot of in that. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I'll mention is we come from a place in uh, a town called Greenwich, Connecticut, 
Whereas the expectation of like what you do to like be successful is like you gotta like basically work in finance. Like right. you're like a doctor, a lawyer, a banker, a failure. Like that's like yeah. what you are when you come from when you're from the Northeast. There's like a yeah. lot of folks that For sure. sort of believe that. And I think it takes a while to get into a space that you is a little bit unorthodox for where you come from and you just like feel confident enough to like do something a little riskier or like I'm not even called out of the box. That's like not traditional from like what you've been brought up to. So we had like sort of traditional thinking when we were in college and then Max went to ad school right after college, but you were a finance major in college. I was a finance major. Yeah. We're probably the worst finance yeah, major. Yeah, we talk about like long time. shots. I like we all started at like where major. you expected us to start. Like I was an English major in college, but then I worked in finance for two years and was shit at it. <laughs> And eventually got into um, a media production company where I was like writing uh, creatively for them, working with Max on the side, and literally like just sort of figuring out how it all worked on our own for four or five years. Basically, they just spent like half a decade trying to figure out how do we sneak into <laughs> entertainment <laughs> through, the back, through the back and then door. Like, yeah. Fatter beers became the Trojan horse. Yeah. So, so like, it was a <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was a long shot in that in that way, but we were just like banging our heads and hammering it away and, and having a fun doing it outside too. It was like, it was really enjoyable. That, I yeah. think that's so relatable. Yeah. The, Cause I cannot tell you, I felt the same way. I have so many friends who are in the same position where you grow up in these environments where you feel like the corporate nine to five lifestyle totally. is what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And then you do it for a couple of years and you realize, wait, I now see the rest of my life. This isn't what I want it's this to be. And it's going the, the down a road very fast. A that would be hard to change. And it, yeah. it, that hits you. Yeah. And so I think that's what makes your guys' story so interesting is you're on that path. You could have comfortably gone down that path. Yeah. I say comfortably. I could have had a, a mortgage and like a certified pre-owned Acura right now. That's Love the that. dream. We, uh, I mean, working, there's no shame in that game either. No, working as not. like a v, the shittiest VP in the history of Deutsche Bank. And, uh, that, <laughs> well, here's the, that can still be a good yeah. life though. It would be great. But, be awesome. their own. Yeah. but then you, you find this other thing. Yeah. So that's what I'm fascinated by is that transition for you guys. Yeah. Was it hard to convince friends and family that it was worth it? Was it hard to convince yourself? At what point did you think, all right, this I'm diving head first into all this? Um, well, we, we all initially tried to play pro basketball. We got to make that clear. We, we, <laughs> Once our hoop we failed. When did, when did that dream die? Yeah, and who like, got the furthest? Actually, year ago for speak, me, I really speak for yourself. I still think I got it. Yeah. some ga the long gas, game. gas <laughs> left in the tank. There it is. <laughs> I, I, I should mention, so Duncan and I, we have never had a soundboard before. We now have a soundboard here, thanks to you guys. It's gonna be I've fun. been waiting. You've upgraded us, yeah. I appreciate that. Honestly, hadn't also, listened we, to it. We are recording, right? That's like on. That's what the red light means, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that would have been that tragic. Would have been bad, about 20 minutes in. Yeah. I've been, I hadn't listened to a word you guys had said for these first 20 minutes. Room. I was just waiting mm -hmm. for an opportunity to use the soundboard. But going back to what you're asking is, we were really fortunate because our uh, our dad and family is like the most uber supportive of right. like whatever you want to do. So he never actually put any uh, uh, intentional. There's pressure no pressure besides like, you like have dude, as long as if you're paying your own rent, and yeah, you're on shit. Do what you want. Yeah, exactly. Like, yes. I, there's no expectations for like go like make a billion dollars. Yeah, or like do this or that. It's like, dude, as long as you're offer like the cell phone bill by the time you're. But well, you were on the I, I still am like, on it, so we're working on that. <laughs> Legendary. But no, that by was the time it. I'm 30, yeah. I'll be off it, yeah. and my dad will be proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, th that's it. Really, was it came down to a point of like um, examining or just like asking yourself, like, do I want to really try and scratch this like itch I have for a passion versus like try and make as much money as possible? And that was all a trade off we did at different times. Yeah. And I think we still value both things equally. Uh, and it's just a matter of like, if you want to say there is, I think the undercurrent of like the nine to five thing is so, so present in Friday beers jokes. Like it's sure. all about like that. And that's why I think the, the humor resonates is because we value like those times you get to experience with your friends more than anything. And that's why people look forward to the content because it's just like we're celebrating, you know, those little moments in life that aren't you sitting at your desk and grinding and doing whatever. And that's a huge, huge theme of what we make jokes about. In the early Friday Beers <laughs> days, was there a point that sticks out of like, all right, this is no longer something fun that we're doing versus like this has the potential to be like really special, life changing? 
Yeah, I, I know when, the first I think time when you hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say the train moment for you. That was the yeah, that, that was super early on. That wasn't even like the moment there, I realized there, it was life changing. A couple changing. moments where it's like we realized, oh, this is viral. Yeah, and then oh, this is like a sustainable. Right, business. that's the thing because you can you can catch lightning in a bottle yeah. on one time going viral. Yeah, but then it's like, all right, how do we sustain this? I, well, well, the sustainable moment for me is when Matt, you went full time, and I was like, all right, well, our brother is like. Literally. Selling out, yeah. No, no. <laughs> he's like, we have to support him now. Like, right. he's like, oh, you know, like he's that. putting his life into this. Like, if it's beautiful. We can't just fucking quit because then, you know, he's not going to have a fucking paycheck. So, yeah. like, I mean, the, we started folding off one by one and going full time. But going back to like the even the earlier days when I first realized, like, this is like kind of like a movement, like, there's a lot of uh, support behind this. It was like, you know, three weeks into posting these videos. And I was sitting at dinner, it's a Friday night, I was getting sushi in Santa Monica, and like my phone just starts blowing up with these tags. And like, I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, am I getting canceled? Like, <laughs> no, but you will. That, yeah, eventually, yeah, yeah. That's a matter of time. And all these people were just tagging Friday beers as they started drinking on Friday. And like, without any, we didn't tell anyone, there was no call to action, it was totally unprompted. And like, people in New York, in Chicago, in LA were just tagging like at Friday beers. And that was the first week where I, you know, we ripped all those videos and made like a recap video being like week one. Yeah. Um, so it became like this weekly tradition, but that, I remember that moment I was like, okay, there's a weird cultural, we hit a weird cultural nerve and we need to like explore it. Like we need to push this. And, and that kind of led to, you know, everything else. Right. Like, yeah. Where we're like, all right, let's start selling merch. And let's, it, it, that was when like the growth, outside of just like, oh, let's just make content for fun, started happening. It's um, it's crazy because once you have eyeballs and an audience, and yeah. I'd, I'd even go as far to say like, you guys have a legitimate community yeah. of people that support you. It's like the potential options there are really limitless. Like you guys can have your hand in whatever you wanna do. Mm. And you've seen that too, like you guys have expanded I think originally it was just merch and yeah. you know the content you were putting out on Instagram and now you're doing, you know, you got DJ press play, you got different events that you're throwing. Yeah. Um, in terms of way down the line, like, is there a goal that we're going for or is it just like, we just want to keep building and feeling out how this plays out? Meet Rob Schneider. Yeah. <laughs> great, well, great a movie with Rob Schneider, not just meet him. Emmy's 2026 with Rob Schneider. <laughs> Maybe move uh, in with Schneider as well. <laughs> That's not another question. We're, is, we, I, we've been feel it not filling it out is the wrong way to say it but like we didn't expect to be in this position i think like a year and a half ago yeah. and then it got to a point where it's like all right we can have an opportunity to like build off this as you said like really incredible community and create like a media company right where friday beers just sits in the middle but it's this little hub where you can have digital media you can have podcasts you can have events you can have apparel you can have crazy music projects like what we're doing with dj press play it's just this little tv shows tv movie ideas yeah, tv yeah. shows that we're creating off the characters like film ideas we're developing and that is the big halo home run like if we could pull something like that off it obviously takes a lot of time it takes a lot more people yeah. than the, just the, us answer, three. The, the easiest way to answer your question is an egot we want an EGOT, yeah. Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony. Yeah, and an ABN yeah, award. That's big time. Yeah. I, I would also <laughs> like to be able to go to a sporting event and have our picture on the big screen and people know, oh, it's Friday Beers. Okay, that's all so I want. You want to be recognized, so you you be recognized say, by like 10,000 You want to sit courtside and be on the Jumbotron, like yeah. chug a beer? Okay, not, that's, not even chug a beer. Be like, okay, I, I okay. kind of know who that is. That's right? actually more important than an EGOT. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Staples Center <laughs> welcomes yeah. Friday Beers. Actually, or just like getting dapped up by like Caruso and yeah, LeBron. Yeah. Like, yeah. That, I mean, <laughs> so that's Caruso ob- makes the cut on that one. <laughs> that's obviously a much bigger goal, uh, but yeah, that's person, be, that would be personal nice. friends with Alex Caruso. Yeah. It's an acknowledgement, hard. maybe. That seems very much in the realm of possibility. I feel like it's Alex doable. Caruso. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. He's got to live around here within 15, 20 I've minutes. I've done some yeah. research. Yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's, <laughs> it's attainable. <laughs> I, so we're here in, again, in HQ. I see, by the way, there's a Duncan Robinson jersey on the wall. Yep. Yeah. We got a Jared Goff. Great interior designs, big time. We, <laughs> yeah, we, got a Frank we had a lot of discussion about the interior design. We, we said, you know, we need the three greatest athletes of all time. Yeah. On the wall. <laughs> wow. And this was after a lot of debate. These are the three. Where do I fall in that, that pecking order? Three. 
Yeah, that's fair. It's reasonable. <laughs> wow, really? Very reasonable. As long as I'm in the top three. I mean, Frank the Tank. I yeah, mean, that's... Frank has a very good uh, message to us, too. It just says, let the suck down commence. So you <laughs> you got to throw a lot of respect on that. Well, I, I think I said something about dualies or something like that. I'll yeah. see you at dualies. I guess this is technically it. So we, we, uh, we fulfilled the promise. We're mid transformation here. Like this is all like a work in progress. Or we want to have all this decked out like eventually. So it's an open call if you're a professional athlete and you want to be featured in Friday beers somewhere. Send us your jersey signed. It could be hung up in this room. Wow. In this room. It's very high yeah. chance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can we talk yeah. hoops? Can we talk NBA playoffs? Hell yeah. I want to know what you guys think. Sam's you been got. waiting for this for years. Yeah, Sam, years. the floor is yours, man. Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's been pretty uneventful, in my opinion, since the... Uh, wait, the, the, first of all, let's just start out. Do we have, yeah. like, a particular loyalty to a team? I mean, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I mean, I, I can set this up. Uh, Sam and I are, like, psychotically... Uh, psychotic LeBron fans. Like, really? We have uh, a religious devotion to LeBron and his success. So uh, wherever he goes, for, for, yeah, we've been Heat fans, Cavs fans, St. So, St. Mary's fans. Uh, <laughs> I, I was actually at the decision in Greenwich, Connecticut, like in the room. No way. Really? Yeah, and so I mean that's where the the spark kind of began. I also kind of indoctrinated you. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of like lived on throughout the years because uh, a couple of years ago I had. A, a reporter reached out to me asking about LeBron's free agency. And I didn't really think much of it. The guy said he was from the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> and then like... <laughs> didn't think much Wait, of how it. Do you, how, <laughs> the Wall Street with what? All, with all due respect, how, how do you get on that, that call list? For the Wall Street Journal thing? Yeah. I have no idea. He, I, is, I, what I, are you talking about? It's because you went yeah, to no, the because you were there. Yeah, the journal, no idea so how he, he was going to you to opine on LeBron's He was revisiting the decision like 10 years later. Gotcha, gotcha. He was like, who was at the decision? He probably found your name on like some list. But the thing is, he asked me for a couple quotes and I was like, all right, that's fine. That would be amazing of him in this article. And then like two months later, I get a message from some guys reading the Wall Street Journal and the opening of this article was like, the gym was quiet by the time Sam Barrett walked in. And I was like, wait, so is this article about me going yeah. to the decision? And Sam, it pretty a, much was. Became a protagonist. And it actually got to the point where Max was so jealous of it, he reached out to the reporter to get a quote. That was an all-time low move. Jealous is not, jealous not yeah. the right move. I was like, I could probably provide some more, additional more insight. Yeah. And, and yeah. he got in. He got in. I, I was in like third paragraph. Yeah. But yeah I mean, so, it's not opening line, but. You know. <laughs> well, the thing is, that, like, he kept coming back to me throughout the article. Right. So it was more of a narrative on my experience, but Max was involved. Yeah, but my yeah. passage is pretty memorable. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're Lakers fans yeah. right now. No, I guess you're so going I, full I, circle. I didn't almost say two. So you're yet. actively rooting against me last year. Wow. Uh, well, uh, oh, yeah. Are you part of the, the yeah, obviously. I'm Jimmy no, Neutron? I'm part of the Jimmy Neutron way. I'm rooting for your success. I want you to drop like eighty, but lose right. in like OT. I guess yeah. that's fair. Yeah. I mean, I, I still don't like fully understand the LeBron devotion, but there's more than just you. Obviously, there are people that follow yeah, him. It, it's goes, it's because so. he's so polarizing, right? Yeah, so it's like you love or you hate him, uh, and we love him. So you <laughs> you watch him live crush the dreams of an entire city and you're like i'm rooting for this guy it's like that's my guy okay. yeah <laughs> i mean takes balls to do that so it was so you're you're also here defending the decision yeah I mean, yeah i'm not yes, i'm not I defending defend, the way i, should be clear, I don't give a shit about anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where do you fall where i do you have fall? no allegiance we, we to should LeBron. probably cut this I'm off technically soon, an, it'll go on i'm right. technically yeah. a knicks fan but like very half-hearted okay because uh they just they haven't inspired me recently but um I'm a New York first player. round exit didn't get you. It was just I, I've been so disinterested for so long that I even didn't even get. And I moved out here, so I like didn't even get really on the bandwagon for this season. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. The, short, long story short, I haven't been paying too close of attention since the Lakers got knocked out. <laughs> like I've been watching kind of as a very passive viewer this, these playoffs. I think Sam. I've, has been, I've more, been watching it all. It's just yeah. doesn't really. Doesn't really doesn't, do it for doesn't me. make him yeah, doesn't you know, make a move. It doesn't make me like actually have panic attacks during the game. So <laughs> not not great. Yeah. When you got when the Heat won game five of the finals last year, you almost had a mental breakdown. Yeah. I went nuts. Yeah. yeah. I <laughs> really I had actually moved here like two days before. So the weekend I moved here, the whole like end of the series happened and like if I wasn't here I we might not be here today with Max. Yeah. I this is one of the wildest moves I've ever pulled. But <laughs> game six, I was so nervous uh, the Lakers were going to lose. So in order to hedge like my emotional distress, I put three K on on the heat. Th- on the heat. 
to. <laughs> I told him not to. I was like, trust me, yeah. I think they're going to win this game. And I was like, I don't, do I, if, if the Lakers lose, I at least need some like money to like make me feel happy. In some twisted way, that actually like <laughs> yeah, make, it that does makes make, sense. No, 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 not yeah. even twisted. Very, sure. logical. <laughs> very logical. Hedging your happiness is a yeah. very normal thing to do. Uh, and then obviously the game was kind of a blowout. So. And he was so happy. After. Yeah. He was At like, that point, you're just like, I don't care about the, it, the three. It, it's, here's here's how you justify logic, it. Yeah. How much would you pay to see your team win? And then you put that against them. Do you have a number? Is it 3K? In 3K? that case, it was 3K. In that case, it might have been more. I, it's all I had. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing all the chips to the middle. Uh, but like a, like a regular season game, like, yeah, 20 bucks. Game six, finals, legacy online, 3K. Done. Makes Easy. sense. Yeah. Do you guys... Uh, so I, I grew up with a, an older brother, so I know that there's like conflict that comes, you know, within the, the household. Mm-hmm. I'm curious of, of running a business with all three of you. Like, is are there internal conflicts and maybe how, this was how are they addressed? Have brought up. <laughs> right. Yeah, how yeah. are they addressed? That's yeah. what I want to know at this point because it's like physical violence. Always <laughs> no. take your shirt off and wrestle. <laughs> yeah. There's there are conflicts. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely. Uh, certain like dynamics that you uh, have established over 29 years of knowing each other yeah. that uh, make you know making really important decisions like from a business perspective that's gonna like affect all of your guys live right. it's like much more complicated and it's uh, been creative decisions too like you know it's not often like you're gonna see eye to eye on like every single objective or subjective creative decision that happens so I think the best way we go about it is like, if you disagree, like that's okay. And like fighting about stuff is okay, but you have to do it in a way where you can like calmly try to reconcile and discuss it after, even if it gets heated. Um, and I think it's definitely been helped too, is like now it's not just us three. Like we have people who work with us and work for us and it can kind of diffuse. So we have to behave properly. It legitimately helps. It's like, do you guys like delegate responsibilities? Is it like you each fill a specific role? Yeah. And in some broad terms, like give me, give me some max is the, is the head creative guy and has, he is the mastermind behind all of the zero business sense. Um, (laughs) I do most of the business and sort of brand building and all that stuff that goes behind it. And I don't, what do you do? I pretty much just keep track of the playoffs for us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's huge. I, yeah, that, that's it's important. Im- it's important. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I kind of work for both of them. Yeah. Know? Sam, so, no, Sam, bit of a Swiss to his credit, does, does yeah. many, Blue guy. Many, there's so many different things yeah. that need to be done in like a uh, business that like is literally changing every single day that like we all have to wear a ton of different hats. Right. So, uh, yeah, Sam, Sam does a lot of that stuff in between too. How are you guys, um, sir? So if you're head of creative, how are you surveying all the content that goes into these posts? Because you guys are referencing scenes from all sorts of different movies. It, it seems so planned and calculated. Yeah. But uh, there's so much content for you to go through. There's there a lot. I mean, process? now it's, we have like a team which is, has been super helpful. So we have people who can pull from their own kind of like knowledge of movie and TV references. But Jack and I always talk about this, like the, we don't, we don't have much, you know, many things that we're good at, but we do have an encyclopedic knowledge of like useless TV (laughs) and movie scenes and sports moments and sports moments. So, you know, for the first year plus it was just us three running the account. So yeah, all of like the references were just us being like, Hey, like what's a good scene for a guy who like, really needs to jerk off. Yeah. Right. Max, I'll give you five those, of those. What was those savage yeah. dunk you saw last year? Yeah. Like, I can send you a couple. Um, yeah. But yeah, as, as we've grown, like we, you know, we tap into like, other people have similar, uh, wells of knowledge, expertise like, that are in, yeah. across like other genres and stuff. And, but at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, we, I think we still have this, a very good instinct for what's going, like what's going to hit, like what's going to work. Um, and, and also, as you said earlier, like what's relatable. Right. So they're always trying to find a mix of like, if is this something that, you know, 90% of our audience is going to be like, all right, like I've seen that before, or I wish I had seen that, or like I definitely is going to be understood by a big part of our base versus just using like really, esso- really like niche weird <laughs> yeah. clips that people, yeah. that, those are meant for other accounts. And we also, I think all three of us have the same habit 
we're like we can't fall asleep at night unless we're yeah. watching like, Arrested <laughs> Development or like, The Office. One of yeah. four shows, I would say The Office. It's always Sunday. Arrested Development. I would th- throw Workaholics in there. Yeah, I went through a Fa- Workaholics family a couple guy. times. Actually, yeah, it was like a, there's guy. like a, a handful of like shows we have to like i can't fall asleep it's gotten to the point where like i've started like dreaming as if i'm in the show so like (laughs) i like i like i'll observe like what's going on and always suddenly like in the show and i'll wake up and be like shit i I wish i was a part of this i'm like yeah i'm like improving with charlie yeah i'm like i'm pretty good at this i can hold my own yeah and i'm like actually i can't yeah just so are you also like watching live sporting events and being like that's for sure we be always are watching TV yeah. here. Like right. we Just always have always a constant it. stream of stuff. It's, on. it's yeah, it's a blessing and a curse because now whenever I watch anything, I'm like, oh, that should be a Friday beers meme. I remember right. during the NFL season, there was a Christian McCaffrey commercial that came on all the time. Yeah, it was like, uh, what was it about? It was uh, like it was like, it was like, they did the, like the inside the play where yeah. they're doing all the um, analytics behind like how fast he was running to the outside. Right. Yeah, John yeah, yeah, yeah. Brink style, yeah. yeah. sports size. Yeah. I, I kept yeah. seeing, it, I was like. Yeah. Okay, that needs to be a meme. And yeah. it, about not getting any. It was a meme about like drought god like yeah. finally getting laid. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was like yeah. So we McCaffrey always had, loved it. Yeah, too. McCaffrey loved it. Yeah. He had a great uh, comment. He uh, he really appreciated. He's it. Like, yes, he's this like, made my year. He's had I was a really like, dude, like, season, this, but... this does not relate to you, bro. Like you're getting laid all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, Copo. Yeah, but that yeah, it's like the, that filter, that Friday beers filter. I view everything through it now. So is um, now that you bring that up, like him acknowledging that, I got to imagine getting some form of acknowledgement from LeBron would be like a milestone. Now we're talking. Yeah. Like, I haven't really thought about that. Yeah. yeah. I, be, I don't want to. I don't want to give myself I any hope. It. Holy shit. Sorry, we got, <laughs> we <laughs> we got, got a game right. on in the background. And France is out. France is out. Holy and, shit. And Locks had France. Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. All right. Sorry. Talking about Le- uh, knowledge from yeah. LeBron. If we can get like a handshake comment from LeBron, be it. That'd be it. So shut, I, shut it down. Shut, shut down, down the account. Yeah, shut I, I went to the uh, like a random Lakers game uh, towards the end of the season, and I was like so close that I could have probably screamed at LeBron and like tried to get his attention. And I was like, ah, like this would just be too cheesy. But then I yelled at Dudley and got some respect from Dudley. So I was like, Dudley's next best thing. D- Dudley, <laughs> Dudley's like at that Caruso tier with us, where he's like, we really. Yeah enjoy what, pretty much every I'm actually curious what is like the NBA's perspective on Jared Dudley what do you guys <laughs> that's a very do you guys question. that's a loaded that's question guy. man that's a loaded question uh, <laughs> clearly doesn't deserve to be in the league no. based off like I mean, uh, skill so I'll, I'll say this like there are <laughs> when okay. only like 10 players are really gonna play and even that like some rotations get cut down to 9 maybe occasionally you'll see 11 play. So if you're looking at it that way, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Just glue guys. They're not, yeah. yeah. So so if they're able to, so the, oftentimes those situations are filled with either like. Homies. <laughs> well, sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's one of two. It's either like yeah. a project, like a younger player that we're going to try to develop. Not or, Dudley. <laughs> <laughs> might be the opposite. Or, or it's somebody that can like provide some other value. Well, and like, hasn't like Donis Haslam been on the Heat for like 30 yeah. years? Yeah. So it's like 18, yeah. 17. Dudley is in there for like his insight. He's like a, but here's he's the thing with UD, like he actually yeah. provides value, like from a leadership sure. perspective. Dudley, yeah. Dudley I don't, he, I can't, I'm not inside that locker room, but like. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I'm sure he has the ear of like some guys. Dud- Dudley you know, said he was like, giving AD and LeBron adjustments in the finals last year. <laughs> I mean, but the, true true. Ways, the little things, the way he looks at things. Yeah. He yeah. said that he would get them in, like he would get their mind out of the gutter, pretty much. <laughs> is this from like a personal conversation <laughs> you have with like, him? Like, yeah, this is Dudley. I heard this on a podcast with Dudley. I usually try to find as many podcasts. Yeah, as like on. LeBron, I just went and adjusted the way your car was parked in the players' <laughs> lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we don't, don't know Dudley slander. Right? I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah, I'm going to stay away from that. But I, like, I'm, I'm sure, I mean, he, he's had a, I don't know, what, 12, 13-year career. I mean, he's. Yeah. I mean, he, we're talking about an all-time sweet gig to just get those 12 and 13 exactly, slots. He's, yeah. the, he's yeah. the guard dog. It's like yeah. that and like yeah. backup quarterback in the oh, NFL. Yeah. Third like, string would be more comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. you're back up, you're one yeah. play away from yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. a whole lot of responsibility. I had a really bad experience in high school about being a backup <laughs> quarterback who had to go in. Well, I've never played before, and it did not turn out great. It's really bad. It like for five, three picks. Crosstown, oh, crosstown, oh, rivalry, crosstown rivalry. It was your moment. Oh dear. Yeah, three I, picks and five three, throws. It was, yeah, it was against the other high school in town. There's like everybody in the town was there. The, the, night, the night before, we're like up late. Yeah. Jack's like, no chance I get in, bro. Like, yeah. let's just get like, let's get hammered. Like, it's fine. 
Oh, he's getting hair. He's playing Madden in the basement. <laughs> oh, it sounds <laughs> a lot you're chiller. Ready, if you're you're preparing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Visualization. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually. Horrifying. I, I was like 10. Yeah. And I went. I showed up late to the yeah. game, and some guy I know is yeah. there. He's like. Jackson, I was like, oh no, oh no. And he goes, it's not looking good. This <laughs> <laughs> is like five minutes of him being in. Was there any redeeming play, like a, no. an option or something like that? Nothing. No. Just <laughs> no, no, no. no. There was no. Oh, no, there man. was a great yeah. redeeming moment the next year when Jack was the starting quarterback yeah. and they played Grand High School again. Yeah. And Grand High School is like way better than our school. Uh, Brunswick School is Brunswick, yeah. yeah. And so, like, there was no expectation like we would even get close. And I remember it ended up being like a tight game. Brunswick lost by like a field goal or like a touchdown or something, which was great, but like still lost. Yeah. But like Jack walked out the field like he was fucking like. It was like, <laughs> it was like yeah, sometimes you just gotta step up. <laughs> it, it, it lost, bro. It, it was like Shane Falco at the end of the replacements, like walking out like one yeah. last time. He's like, yeah. Sometimes you gotta <laughs> rise. We, we did it. Gave your jersey to someone yeah. in the stands. Yeah. Only well, we lost by one score. Yeah. I think we actually lost by two touchdowns. But you did have to step up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you did. I want to. I want to get back yeah. to trying to get people's attention. We talked about athletes, LeBron. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about Dua Lipa and the attempt to, or I guess the failed attempt yeah. to get her attention? Well, I, well, we, got, well, we got her attention. We got her attention. That's yeah. a fair, thing. Fair, 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 fair. It's however you want to want to paint it. Have right. you seen her Truly ads? No. She's now the spokesman for Truly oh, that's uh, perfect. Hard yeah. Seltzer. Yeah. So she's so all sense. over the. She's place a straight down up here. rival at this point. She's yeah. an enemy. Yeah. If if you had maintained. Yeah the relationship, whatever you want to call it, and she started doing Truly ads, would you have cut bait? Yeah. You would have had to, right? Oil to. to the soil, man. Yeah, dude, it's bad form. You can't, yeah. you can't support her like that. Is there anything that happened like that yeah, the Max, public maybe doesn't Max know about? can tell you that what uh, happened. Uh, nothing public. Actually, there's, there's one funny story that didn't uh, contribute to like her blocking us. Well, you but, know why she blocked us, right? No. Uh, oh, you should tell us. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> Tulipa was the one account we followed. Uh, and we we're basically just trying to win her heart through right. through memes for about four months, <laughs> giving it everything you had. Yeah, and we got a lot of support. And we we didn't know this. We found out she was dating this dude Anwar Hadid, right? Who's just like the worst guy. He, rep <laughs> he represents everything Friday Beer stands against. Yeah, all of us who are grinding through the nine to fives and working for the you know for our buddies and not taking anything for granted. That's the opposite of Anwar. Yeah, he's Silver Spoon McGee. Silver, <laughs> Silver Spoon yeah. McGee. <laughs> potential Friday Beers character. So every like whenever she would post a photo, we would yeah. of of them two, we would say something just kind of like it, it got worse. Harmlessly, like, yeah, harmlessly like being like, oh, like I think initially it was like this um, is in the comments. In the comments, uh, yeah. The other thing about MRD is very ugly too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, according it's to us, some, some there. people yeah. do think he's attractive. But it's I'll do a leap. It seems sick. Yeah. Yeah. And. Eventually got to a point Love where our, our comments on her photos were getting like 3,000 likes. So they were becoming the top comment. Right. So like she was clearly seeing the comments. The Hadid sisters were seeing the comments. And then they posted, <laughs> Dua Lipa posted a photo of her and Anwar. And we commented, who's the Make-A-Wish kid? Oh, and <laughs> like within like an hour, like boom, blah. Like, yeah. So the funny uh, untold part of that story, like, Two weeks or like a week earlier, we got reached out to by like Dua Lipa's I guess like digital management team, and they were like, "You guys like your your whole we, like banter with her is hilarious." We love it. Yeah, we like I can imagine like a Dua Lipa Friday beers like TV show. Oh, so there was shit. some opportunity there. Yeah, we were like about a week from potentially connecting. Well, with we her. said she had to break up with Anwar yeah. to do it. So, <laughs> and then, like, yeah. made the comment like blocked, and we're like, "All right, back to the drawing." <laughs> we, were, we were literally selling red t-shirts that said Anwar sucks in bold <laughs> white lettering which is, which is like so kind of like uh, like not our brand like we're all about like everyone's invited to the party positivity you don't have any yeah. any like real antagonizing relationships with anyone except Anwar except for Anwar yeah. there's the one exception and Seltzer and yeah, Seltzer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but in terms of like people yeah. like everyone come one come all yeah. not Anwar yeah. so who who actually commented that that was me. <laughs> I, I think it was a hilarious comment. Yeah. Stand okay. by that 100%. Yeah. I would do it again if I were you. Yeah, I wouldn't change anything. How's her Instagram would, feed yeah. now? I don't even follow. Is she posting some good stuff? I honestly don't follow her, but uh, I mean... Yeah. What no are the world of Friday beer? I'm surprised yeah. she's still making music. Yeah, after, wow. After her career has I was going to say, that's yeah. a tough yeah. career move for her to fracture that relationship yeah. with you guys. 
we had so many people like reaching out being like Dua Lipa is awesome like we never heard listen to her music before I, like, I didn't know who she was until yeah, I followed right? her like, seriously I, yeah, I had no idea I feel like we did have a, a, a sort of not maybe a lot of material but like a little bit of impact on introducing that new was people that Kanye, that Kanye West lyric about yeah. Taylor Swift like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. made that bitch <laughs> <laughs> Dua Lipa was already like a yeah. huge international yeah. pop star. Five but years, she's, like, been, she's gotten girl. really big over the last year and a half, I'd say. Like, she's gotten huge over the last yeah. year and a half. And we take most of the credit for that. And yeah. it was because the timeline of lines yeah. up. Yeah. So but we got a better one now with Haley Steinfeld. I was going to say, you've yeah. moved on. Yeah. Is there a reason we located Haley Steinfeld as the. We, the we've always had a, a crush on Haley. <laughs> He said like we, but like yeah, Max is the one who makes all, all the decisions about this. <laughs> what did your DMs look like when you got to the NBA Finals? I, I will say, like, when, when you make a run, there's obviously a certain level Everyone's of Everyone's coming out of the woodwork. I think they were mainly for me, yeah. being like, I can't have you, like, playing this well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, a lot of from yeah. Jelly Fam yeah, yeah, I will say, majority of my DMs are, like, 14, 15-year-old NBA fans. It's either, like... Boys, right. boys. You're, yeah. yeah, you're terrible, or, like, come to my team. <laughs> it's like, if you play well, yeah. like, I'm just getting, like, death threats from the opposition or if i play poorly then it's like my own fan base is just like throwing me under the bus so how many yeah, uh, jimmy neutron memes did you get sent? oh so many yeah what, that who, one was who started that one i mean honestly that, this is like where it was like snoop dog or something no this is where i kind of fucked oh. up i was like i basically like told on myself i yeah. uh they were saying it during the game and then oh. it was like somebody on their bench I, I think it was maybe javel mcgee or dwight howard or like somebody over there i couldn't even i couldn't even see who it was but like it didn't happen until game five and then it was just right. like every possession down the floor plus you're in the bubble like there's no fans right, right. so you're like clearly hearing everything that's being said and uh i went on a podcast like two weeks after we lost with uh, mark titus and yeah. uh, tate frazier this is also like two weeks before we're launching our podcast yeah. so and i just down. like i could have held on to the content and like yeah. used it yeah. and uh, <laughs> i like said it on theirs and i just kind of blew up from there and then from there it just like went crazy you ever think about like super leaning into it and like you, you coming into the game and you got like the neutron hair <laughs> I <dude>. thought, so <laughs> we're wearing like exactly what he wears like that t-shirt that, or whatever that's actually i i thought yeah. about it a bunch like i have no problem it's a swag look, into, dude. yeah 100 percent. yeah um boy genius I mean, what are we talking <laughs> yeah. about here but uh yeah i definitely yeah. missed some opportunities to like fully tap into it but like when it was blowing up we also weren't playing either right so i thought about like i had an instagram post that was like dialed up that was it was like two two different pictures and one of them was me and the other was jimmy neutron i was gonna be like some kind of play on that you could always do yeah. it for a halloween is it happens every year it's a true story yeah, yeah. yeah you could yeah. rock that yeah, you could do a funny photo where it's like you know like find like the five differences in the two <laughs> yeah. like there are five things different like you and neutron yeah <laughs> I could also see that like an NBA 2K Instagram account, you know, that has like the ones that has Mr. Krabs like going oh, off yeah, on it, yeah, like really creating perfect. like a, a Neutron character is like 100% three point range. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You go off of 50 with Jimmy Neutron. Yeah. Just elevating. Yeah. Well, yeah. the thing that was like, I yeah. thought weird about that too, is I got a ton of Sheen comparisons oh. also. Yeah, you I, do see almost she, more I see like Sheen. Sheen way more. But, it, but <laughs> this is what I don't understand is how, like those are two characters that don't oh, look alike. How yeah. can you look like both of them? I think you know what they, I mean? yeah, they, they had a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think the neutron's more of like general like you're white like yeah i mean i have a, like I have a big head and i have like the little kind of hair whatever so i kind of see right, that right. but i actually i agree i think i see the sheen, sheen. Yeah. comparison more man sheen is a deep cut he's not yeah. i know like top go-to yeah he's, he's pretty useless in general <laughs> um, my favorite is i see a lot of he looks like the generated <laughs> bass player if you create a guy in 2k yeah, <laughs> uh, i think that's pretty good before any customization yeah i've yeah, heard right, that i've right. heard 11 from stranger things <laughs> yeah when oh, i have my hair a little bit shorter it's like, like, like a 13 year old chick yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so that one cuts cuts deep as well um but again both pro prodigal talents jimmy neutron and 11 that's true yeah so maybe one of think, one yeah you know what i mean exactly. like she, she that's like rare air. Yeah. she has really no redeeming qualities so we'll cut that one out of you when they say mental health is a journey they mean it that's why it's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every single day. When you work on yourself, it brings positive changes in all areas of your life. The long-term effects of therapy can give you the tools to deal with challenges as they arise, strengthen your relationships, and give you more positive outlook on life. There's no better time to invest in yourself than right now. Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform that has thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, substance abuse, food and eating, and much more. 
It's a fraction of the cost of in-person therapy. And instead of waiting for an appointment, you can send unlimited messages to your therapist 24 seven, and they'll engage with you daily, five days a week. Talkspace is secure, it's private, and they use the latest encryption technology to store client information and keep you safe. I really do feel like there's a bad stigma that comes with therapy or mental health, but I know for me, myself personally, you know, speaking with somebody has, has made a difference in my life, and I strongly encourage others to go out there as well uh, and, and do the same. I think it can absolutely be a difference maker. Everybody can use therapy. 100%. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong or broken. Anyways, as a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month of Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code LONGSHOT, that's one word, to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's LONGSHOT in Talkspace.com. <laughs> um, all right, I want to transition into the uh, kind of the closing segment. We have an undrafted segment. I told you guys a little bit about it before, but basically we're going to give you three topics. Yeah. We want you to uh, give us the like underrated, underappreciated answer of each one. We'll just go down the line and uh, you know see what happens yeah. from there. Yeah, I think you either reach consensus as a group, okay. or if there's you know if there's disagreement, maybe we can pick the better answer. Yeah, I like that. So I'm going to lead it off here. Uh, just comedy movie. Keep it simple. Keep it right in your lane. Just one that you feel just doesn't get enough love. Hot, Whoever. Hot Rod. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. I think it's one of the go-to Friday Beers movies, but I think it doesn't, it's not viewed on par to maybe like the Anchorman's right. classic comedies, like 2000s comedies, but I, I think it is one of the best. Uh, That's great. That's great, great answer. Yeah, it's comedies. Uh, probably Deuce Bigelow European. <laughs> I mean, so people just write uh, in they, your Rob Schneider. They, they, they that. overlook it because of the original. Deuce yeah, Bigelow. I, I, you know, give a real answer. It's not a real answer. Well, I mean, this is probably pretty popular, but I think the other guys like the funniest movie. Yeah, that's that's good. I agree with that. Yeah, it's yeah. 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 and it, like every scene makes me laugh every time, yeah. and like it's yeah. just not really talked about as one of uh, Will Ferrell's more elite movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we actually just talked about this one, uh, Euro Trip. Euro trip. Talking, yeah, it's uh, yeah, our buddy was saying actually, that he like hadn't seen Euro trip in so like long since high school, yeah. And like, it was Matt Damon's in it, like, Scotty doesn't know Fred, Fred Armisen. Armisen, yes, yeah. Uh, I would, I would almost, I would, if we we're gonna support one, I would I almost put my weight behind Euro trip too. Wow, I yeah. think it's, it's, I think it's like almost perfect, it's a deeper cut, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I like, it. I like Euro trip. Well, the group, the group is spoken. Then I guess we're going Euro trip well, for Sam, now. Sam, we went to, we went to, yeah. <laughs> Sam we went to uh, Europe with our family two years ago, and we watched Euro trip on the train oh, yeah. ride from uh, London to Paris. Well, Sam was hung over, yeah. he was asleep, hung over. <laughs> yeah. On the long night. Yeah, long night. On, on a bit of a bender. I the see. fact yeah. that <laughs> I mean a European bender. Matt Damon, <laughs> tongue ring skinhead rock star yes. <laughs> in Euro trip is like so inexplicable. Yeah. Like, to, to go beat. back and yeah. watch that. Yeah. It's Legendary. so fucking good. All right. Yeah. I got the second one. I'm going professional athlete who doesn't get enough love. This is all time. Doesn't have to be a current athlete. I'm feeling a, a Dudley answer coming there. <laughs> uh, Paul Millsack. Wow. wow. Yeah. As you wear a composite quick t-shirt. answer. Yeah. Yeah. Very that important. Is, yeah, no, that is. So I feel actually, strongly about that. I feel very it. strongly about it. Yeah. I think, uh, and he's just—he's a true professional, uh, and I think the moment that hit me was when they were down three-one to the Clippers last year in the bubble, and then he said that someone on the Clippers started talking shit to him in the third quarter when they were down sixteen, and he took over, and then they—the so rest, rest is history. Love that. Damn, that's very uh, informed and current as well. Yeah, I I'm gonna say um, Bernie Williams. Wow. Love the center, that. great Dude, center fielder uh, for the New York yeah. Yankees, who was really five tool player, even though he didn't have a strong throwing arm. But <laughs> so um, so he's he not could a hit for four, average, four, four and a half. Hit for average, hit for power, hit clutch, and he was part of my the Yankee team that informed like I yeah. became Very a good fan. I, I was I was thinking of yeah. the same team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Very talented. But you were thinking of uh, I was thinking of Louis Soho. Louis Soho. Yeah, Louis Soho was like the utility guy for the Yankees in the nineties. Played every. Position. I would think I can <laughs> honestly He's say I've yeah. never heard that. Name. Never heard Louis Soho. I've okay. never right, heard that. Yeah. He used to be a huge be baseball fan. He's too. properly yeah. rated as a utility player. Right, but I, he came up clutch in a couple moments. His game winning ground roll double <laughs> against the Rays. Yeah, over 36. I had a hit, <laughs> I had a hit 36 at bats. Uh, Goes to the Metro Dome. Game winning ground roll double. Is that Tropicana uh, Field? That Tropicana. Metro yeah. Dome. Mental fortitude. 
Um, There's some the, the Yankees teams of the late nineties was full of under underrated yeah. guys like that. What is the is the Metrodome anything? Uh, Metrodome is the old it, twin stadium. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't totally off. Yeah. The the <laughs> Dimmodome. Uh, we could go with Paul Millsap, but I also feel like he's made like five hundred million dollars. Yeah, he's made about one hundred twenty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, was, he uh, recently looked it up. He was the second highest paid yeah. player in the NBA for a year. Yeah. yeah. So I mean no, that, that like, rates him that, pretty properly. But that <laughs> yeah. is a testament to what he's done. Because he was like the like late second round pick in like 2006. Louisiana Tech, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Graduate. That's right. Yeah. Great stuff. There you go. Long shot. Um, I like Soho. Yeah, watch some Louis Soho. I'll watch some highlights. Watch the uh, <laughs> David Cohn or uh, El Duque, Orlando Hernandez, yeah. and Louis Soho Adidas commercial from the late 90s. Yeah. Well, You'll classic. Like that. Yeah. That just reminded me yeah. uh, maybe some of your most relatable content to me is the late night John Wall mixtape. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like yeah, when yeah. you're just like, I mean, you yeah. can we, can that be a question? Yeah. yeah. Most underrated mixtape. I love it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, pretty that's pretty absolutely the last most question. Underrated uh, yeah. Yeah. The most underrated Our, high school mixtape. Okay. Gotta be high school. Well, we, we Ball's were, life when we were mixtape. kids, uh, we uh, had a car that had like a TV in it. And that we could play DVDs in and like drive us around to sports yeah. uh, games and things like and that. Grew up going to school and stuff, and, and we'd always have the yeah. N one mixtape. Love that. Yes. So yeah, you know, we grew. Uh, I mean, I to this day, and we I, I still think the, the professor Tyson Chandler, the professor hitting yeah. the game winning shot at Madison Square Garden. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. like the games, like they don't even and have Escalade score. Goes, yeah. Like, yeah. How are you just, you're just determining this is a game winning shot? Like what? Escalade goes. I think it's over. <laughs> <laughs> Pro- <laughs> professor just hit a, sh- a game winner in the Mecca. <laughs> I think this competition is over. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Escalade <laughs> died. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. All right. Peace. Yeah. So oh, that's the question. The last one. Yeah. The professor. Uh, no, we're talking high school. Uh, high school. Yeah. Gotta be high school. High yeah. school. Uh, okay. So there, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. There was a, a combo. I'm trying to remember the second guy, but it was. I think his name was Deuce Bello. Yeah. And Deuce there was Bello. and there was another guy in the mixtape. They both played in like. This league in Florida where it was like it was almost like a league that like Brunswick would be in. Right. It's like really mediocre athletes. Yeah. And like the combination of these guys playing together would like get pretty much against you. Right. It was like one of the most absurd yeah. things I've ever seen. Deuce Bella. Yeah. I, I think he went to Baylor maybe. Did he yeah, Baylor? I, see, I right. think he did. What's Crazy the one you guys are always sitting around like I like Greg Brown? Oh yeah, Greg Brown's current. Oh. Well, yeah. he's, he's, I'm trying to think of Texas. Yeah, 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 underrated. Yeah, a couple of baptisms in his highlights. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of like an underrated mixtape because, like, top of my mind, it's like Akil Carr, Se- Seventh Woods, Seventh Woods, yeah, uh, sure. just guys who just never panned out. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I underrated it as uh, I used to play against a guy named Unique McLean. And that guy, yeah, for sure. You know, I'm not in New York. Yeah, 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 yeah crazy. Yeah. He went to UMass. He Actually, had crazy about Dwayne. Yeah. Dwayne Poli is my underrated. That's a great yeah. one. <laughs> Dwayne Poli used to San jump Diego State. from the yeah. fucking free throw line. Yes. This guy had bounce like I've never seen, and yeah. as like a 13 year old kid I'm like this guy's gonna be the best player ever yeah like, no, he still no could quite. be <laughs> he was crazy be. long too yeah. like yeah. Yeah. freak he actually time. might have been the guy that was the second guy in the uh, one that I was talking about earlier oh yeah he might have been <laughs> um, I don't know if I have a basketball one but do you guys remember the running back Noel Devine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He had sort of the most infamous, like, It was like football. a micro site. It was like his own link. It was like, like sort of like, like an E-bombs yeah. world vibe <laughs> thing where you'd go and watch this kid's highlight tape. Yeah. And he was like, he could run like sideline to sideline all the way across the field. Like, it was like when you guys. have like, yeah, like uh, running back on, or Michael Vick in like yeah. Madden 07. Yeah, you could just. Like going everywhere. Who was, the, who the was the, like the middle schooler? Who Cody had, Paul. Cody Paul. Yeah, 100%. Cody Paul. Yeah, but he was like 12. Yeah. Like, like, I think he like was also fully grown at that point. Yeah. Still well, pretty good high school. Daniel Just developed yeah. 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 It's like Derrick Henry's high school football. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're running for like 700 yards in a game. He's <laughs> yeah. playing a different sport. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> Imagine that like in uh, fourth period algebra and then realizing yeah. later on yeah. the day you have to tackle Derrick Henry <laughs> yeah. in the open field. That sounds awesome. like, I just want to jerk off. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm, I'm playing football Actually, but I have to play a sport we should, right. I think right. we should yeah. make like some like there's probably some great almost Fridays in in that space of like what Derrick Henry looked like in the backfield <laughs> compared yeah. to like everybody else on his team yeah. <laughs> well there is the classic like Derrick Henry next to Mark, Mark Ingram, Ingram. Yeah. 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 like that's a pro running back <laughs> right yeah that's a fucking classic one um, yeah. alright well that that pretty much wraps it up 
Uh, super appreciative of you guys for having us. That was a Come ton of fun. Any time, man. I'm looking forward to uh, some future collabs here. Yeah, yeah uh, between whether it be long yeah, shot dude, or ex- expect a lot more from Friday beers times <laughs> Duncan Robinson. Baby. Love you love you're coming. Uh, uh, coming back. Beginning. Coming back a couple weeks to be on our podcast. Hundred percent. Yes. During a sketch too. I'm, back. I'm all, I'm all the way in. in. Scott, remember the Skylar Fulton? Oh, awesome we're gonna event. do that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Skylar's gonna I'm love in. that, dude. Yeah. Um, Wait, you're gonna play? I think he plays fringe guy in that sketch. Yeah, I think you do. Sorry, I've experienced <laughs> in that role. I've yeah, experienced in that role for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we appreciate you guys, and uh, yeah, for all you listeners, make sure we're. Tuning. I mean, you guys have a way bigger fan base than we do, but for, for the record, if you haven't heard of Friday beers, please check them out. <laughs> um, all right, all right, cheers, cheers guys. guys.